Today's gospel is one of the most important Eucharistic passages in the New Testament. This feast, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, known as Corpus Christi, is celebrated by the church throughout the world. The gospel stresses how strongly we honor the realism of Jesus' presence in the Eucharist. In other gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the evangelists use the word that is best translated as body. In John's gospel, he uses the word translated as flesh. Terms like body could have symbolic meanings, but the term flesh is more visceral. It has no other meaning than the real physical flesh of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants us to have no misunderstanding. He is talking about his real flesh and his real blood. Jesus tells us to eat his flesh and drink his blood. There were different terms for the verb to eat. The word phragian is used for the way we eat, the way we eat our meals. Jesus uses the word trojan, a word that would be used to describe how wild animals would eat. Picture a lion munching on his kill, something along the lines of gnaw. In short, Jesus purposely emphasizes the very physicality to which the crowd was objecting. Jesus wants us to understand that when we eat his body and drink his blood, we are being invited to really eat his body and drink his blood. Phragian could be taken symbolically to mean digesting something intellectual or assimilating an idea. You may have heard someone say, chew on this or let me digest that idea. Jesus is going out of his way to make his point very clear. He uses the word Trojan four times. He is giving us a real gift of his physical body and blood. And to receive that gift, we must really eat it. In today's post-pandemic world where we no longer drink from the cup, I must explain that the bread that we eat is the body and blood of Jesus. If we were to drink from the cup, we are taking the body and blood of Jesus. Now we must reflect on why is Jesus giving us this tremendous gift. Throughout chapter 6, Jesus has been drawing a parallel between the people of Israel receiving manna in the desert and his gift of the bread of life. Just as manna gave the people nourishment to continue their journey, so too the gift of the Eucharist that we receive nourishes us in our Christian journey. The Israelites in the desert were on a journey from death to life, from Pharaoh to the promised land, from sin to salvation. We are also on a journey moving towards God, away from sin and slavery. Just as the Israelites needed nourishment on their journey, we too need nourishment, encouragement on our journey to persevere in discipleship and conversion. Jesus tells us, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. He tells us, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. He alone can give us the necessary nourishment to get us through our deserts. If we ever come to Mass and receive Holy Communion and don't leave here nourished, don't leave here renewed in discipleship, don't leave here with a new conversion, then something's wrong. When we have just received the body and blood of Jesus Christ, if we are not different after receiving than we were before, then something's wrong. A disciple is not only someone who follows Jesus and obeys his teaching, but a disciple is someone who is actually transformed by the very presence of Jesus that we receive. Every weekday, several people come to daily mass to receive the body and blood of Jesus. Most of them come every day. They are very holy people. Several parishioners bring communion to the sick and the homebound. They don't do it for fun or as an activity. They do it because they believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. They believe that they are bringing Jesus to them. Finally, we have to reflect on what our response to Jesus' gift is. Jesus' insistence that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood would have repulsed the Jews. 
Eating the flesh and drinking the blood of another human being is way beyond any human being, and even more so for the Jews with their stringent dietary laws. But maybe more scandalous to the Jews than eating flesh and drinking blood is Jesus associating himself with God. This part of John's gospel is called the bread of life discourse. Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. He says, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, talking about the manna in the desert. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. And he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Jews quarreled among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus could have eased off a bit and said, wait, I'm only speaking symbolically. But he doubles down. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Jesus' words are indeed hard. Many disciples abandoned him because of them. Jesus allowed them to leave. But Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? If you think I have exaggerated when I said you should feel nourished when you receive his body and blood, that you should have a sense of renewal in discipleship, that you should have a new conversion, I did not exaggerate. If you don't know how to get from here to there, let me tell you how I convinced myself that the Eucharist is truly the body and blood of Christ. I realized that I may have some doubts. I didn't feel that complete change the moment after receiving. I decided to train myself. When we approach the altar, the priest or the deacon says, the body of Christ, and you say, so be it. You say, amen. When I received, I said, amen. And then as I brought the Eucharist to my mouth, I stole a quick glance and said to myself, the body and blood of Christ. After a thousand times of doing that, I began to believe 100% that I just received this precious gift of Jesus' body and blood. When Peter said, Master, to whom shall we go? He added, You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. God. 